Hello everybody, welcome back to another um, Music Finds video. Now, I know I said at the beginning of this year that I was going to separate vinyl and uh, CD videos, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just combine them all in one because I did a big uh, record show earlier this month, and that's where most of my vinyl came from. I did have one additional piece um, that I purchased, so I didn't want to make a whole video dedicated to that. Um, and I will say one album that I don't have with me, but that I bought this last month was uh, Find a Light by Blackberry Smoke. They're a, a Southern rock band, but um, they, they, you know, they have different influences in their, in their music, not just, you know, Southern rock, but um, there's a great song on there called uh, Mother Mountain that they do with one of my favorite groups, the Wood Brothers, which was a big reason why I purchased it, but it's a great album all the way around, but it's down in my car. And I wasn't going to go above and beyond for that album <laughs> to go back down, you know, a few floors to get, get one CD that is in my car. So with that being said, let me jump right into it. Um, these are, again, these are all albums that are non-VCLT. Uh, so they're not out there. These are albums that I've never done a dedicated video to. So um, the first thing I'm going to show is the vinyl. And I picked this up. You Should Be So Lucky by Ben Mont Tench. This is an album that he put out in 2014, 10 years ago. Hard to believe uh, there's Ben Mont looking extra cool. Uh, of course, Ben Mont was the um, keyboard player for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, as well as Mud Crutch. He was an original member. And um, this was his first and so far only solo album. Although I've heard rumors that he's working on another album. But um, he toured after this album. Uh, actually, my friend um, Music Talks with John, his channel, he was showing this on a stream that he did with Glenn Kellaway and Rob uh, over at Northern Revolutions. And I had no idea they had reissued this. And again, it's on Blue Note. Uh, it is out of print, the um, CD. And um, yeah, I was happy to happy to get this. This is 180 gram vinyl produced by Glenn Johns, this record. Um, it's got, you know, I think Tom Petty is on here. Um, Ron Blair, I believe, is on here. Um, so there, there's, there's quite a bit, you know, there's quite a few guest stars on here. Really, really fun. Um, kind of a jazzy bluesy kind of album. He does a version of, um, Duquesne Whistle by Bob Dylan. And he also does Karina Karina. Um, and this record has two extra tracks that aren't on the CD called She's My Girl Now and After All I've Done For You on Side D. So John, I appreciate you bringing this to my attention and I'm happy to have it on vinyl because I'm a Heartbreakers completist. Yeah, excuse me, there's something like that. Um, I did buy a bunch of jazz, speaking of jazz with Ben Mont, I bought a bunch of Miles Davis albums that were like $5 each on his website. So I'll just run through those, and Amazon did wonders with the shipping, because almost all of them have cracked cases. But I got Someday My Prince Will Come, um, that's his wife on the front. Um, just a, you know, a great album, it's got Someday My Prince Will Come from Snow White, the Disney movie. Um, this has Miles um, with John Coltrane, Hank Mobley, Wynton Kelly, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb, and then Philly Joe Jones on one track. So a solid lineup there, and I've listened to that one. I've listened to most of these albums. There are a couple of Miles that I haven't gotten to. Um, this is Working with the Miles Davis Quintet. Um, this is Red Garland, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Paul Chambers, and Philly Joe. Um, Coltrane recorded a bunch of um, music that kind of got him out of his um, record contract. They put out a bunch of albums. Um, this is one of them and another one which I also purchased and I have the other two. The other one was Cooking. I haven't listened to this one yet but I'm sure it's more of the same great um, sessions. Um, this is with his you know, huge version of My Funny Valentine which would then show up on the um, live album of the same name and um, so I'm, I'll be happy to listen to that tomorrow morning probably when I'm uh, working from home. Um, speaking of My Funny Valentine, this is called Miles Davis 4 and More. Um, this is essentially the, um, um, the the more upbeat tunes that were recorded during the same sessions for the My Funny Valentine live show um, from 1964. So it's um, that would have been an incredible concert to see. Well, this one has, you know, So What is on here, Walking, Joshua, um, Seven Steps to Heaven, so some classic Miles Davis tunes on there. So I'm excited to finally listen to that as well because My Funny Valentine is killer. Um, another one, 
big album, Milestones, Miles Davis. Um, this is with Cannonball Adderley on alto, John Coltrane, Garland, Paul Chambers, and Philly Joe. Um, so this is, um, again, another good one, Straight No Chasers on here, Milestones, a couple of the bigger hits. So happy to have some Miles filling in. I'm essentially trying to fill out, at least up until, you know, at least up until probably the 70s for Miles Davis. I'm not sure if I really need his, his 80s output. I was not a big fan of that kind of jazz. But anyway, um, the last one is on here um, is Filets de Kilimanjaro. Um, this is the um, the end of the second quintet. Um, this has Wayne Shorter on it, Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, and Tony Williams. Of course, by this point, you had electric piano brought in there with Herbie Hancock. So Miles is slowly making his way to um you know that 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 fusion this was like around in a silent way um so that that kind of that kind of style all right that's all of my jazz um i did get a, a gift from my dad um on the second to last day of the month um this is an album that my dad has talked about for a long time it's actually a compilation it's called there is always one more time by um singer Johnny Adams, who is not well known. This is on Rounder Records. He's got a voice similar to Tom Jones. Um, Dad told me that, and when I listened to this album, I um, I definitely knew what he was talking about. Um, the very last track on here um, has Aaron Neville. He also has a, um, a duet with Harry Connick Jr., um, Alvin Red Tyler, and then Ruth Brown is on a funny song called I Don't Know. Um, a great double entendre song, Body and Fender Man. But these are essentially um, singles and, um, you know, some of his best stuff for Rounder. Um, so thank you, Dad, for that. Appreciate it. Um, I've got two. Well, let me do this. Uh, I know last month I picked up License to Ill uh, in February. I picked up... Um, Paul's Boutique, the second album by the Beastie Boys, a much different um, sound than than License to Ill. Um, by this point, they'd broken away from Def Jam. Um, they kind of had a falling out with Rick Rubin, if I understand correctly. And um, they put out Paul's Boutique. Um, again, it it's a harder album than, than License to Ill. This was essentially the Beach Boys clapping back at people that said that they were kind of, you know, novelty rap, that they were all about the humor and that sort of thing. So this is harder, a little bit more explicit than uh, License to Ill and the lyrics. And um, again, just, just some harder sounds, but full of great sampling, all sorts of Beatles samples. Johnny Cash is on here. So um, yeah, Paul's Boutique. That's for you, uh, Brian Massey over at Massey's Entertainment, main entertainment, excuse me. Um, I picked up another to fill out my collection of, um, the Kinks reissues. This was the self-titled, uh, debut Kinks. This is the, um, two disc version, um, which is actually getting harder to find, but, um, I'm happy to have this. I've got, I think this was the last one I needed. I have all the other ones that have come out. Um, so excited to get this. Um, this says, you know, you really got me on here. Bald headed woman, too much monkey business. Um, all, and then all sorts of, um, all sorts of, um, bonus cuts. So it's in stereo and mono. Uh, I already mentioned, um, shine a light, um, find a light, excuse me, whatever it was by, uh, <laughs> Blackberry Smoke with the Wood Brothers connection. The last two albums I'm going to show also have kind of a Wood Brothers connection, but aren't Wood Brothers records. Um, the first is um, an album called A Horrible Beautiful Dream, which is the most recent album by songwriter Sean McConnell. Um, he's kind of got a voice. Um, it's kind of a, a sweeter kind of Americana voice. I, I, the name doesn't come to me now of who, I, who, he, who, who he reminds me of. But um, this album has a song, a fantastic song called The 13th Apostle with uh, the Wood Brothers on it. So he, he does collaborate with the Wood Brothers. Um, I believe he actually toured with them for a, a little bit. But he also has um, a, a song called Waiting to be Moved with Natalie Hemby. And then he has a song called As the Curtain Came Down with Audra May and Dan Tominski. And of course, Dan Tominski is in a Union Station with Alison Krauss. And he also had the big song Man of Constant Sorrow. He sang the George Clooney 
um, vocals. So, um, really, 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 really good singer-songwriter album, Horrible Beautiful Dream. And then lastly, one of the first uh, new albums that I bought this year. This is an artist I've never heard of named J.P. Ruggieri <clears throat> called Gradually Descend Into Chaos. And the reason I, I got this album is because he has a song on here called Without the Sun, uh, which features vocals from Oliver Wood from the Wood Brothers on there. And then this was also produced by um, uh, John O'Rix, who is the um, percussionist for and keyboard player for the Wood Brothers. So if Jono's name is on it, I'm probably going to get it just because it has that Wood Brothers sound. Uh, I did the same thing with an album last year by a fellow named Seth Walker. Um, similar kind of thing, similar kind of sound. Um, this is a little bit more laid back than Wood Brothers music, but it's got that Wood Brothers um, instrumentation and it's got the great John O'Rick's high harmonies on here. So JP Ruggieri, um, gradually descend into chaos. So there you go. Those are my um, CDs and my one vinyl record that I picked up in February. And, you know, and albeit not my VCLT, um, which I've made separate videos for. But anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, let me know what you think of these records um, and the CDs. Um, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I've gotten a few subscribers recently. So thank you all for subscribing. The new, new folks, I appreciate you all joining up. Uh, yeah, all that good stuff. So in the meantime, you all be good. Take care. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.